The government is reviewing the involvement of Britain's second biggest house builder, Persimmon, in its Help to Buy scheme, which aims to assist first-time buyers onto the property ladder with the purchase of a new-built home. The Housing Minister, James Brokenshire, expressed his increasing concern to the house builder. Persimmon was widely criticised after its previous boss was awarded a bonus of £75 million, and there have been complaints about the quality of some of its houses, as well as its use of leasehold agreements. Sam Baker bought her Persimmon house in Dorset using help to buy in May last year. A lot was wrong with the house. A lot got promised to be done um, that didn't get done. A lot of things should have been done before we moved in, sort of outside, like things like the street lighting that wasn't completed. Occasionally they've sent somebody round, but then sometimes they, they say they're sending somebody round. We've spent countless Saturday mornings sat in waiting for them to turn up and they just don't show up. You just basically get pass from pillar to post when you you know you work full time and you work really hard to you know buy a house and pay for it it's pretty heartbreaking the house builder is set to report an annual profit of one billion pounds help to buy started six years ago and contracts for the extension of the scheme are due to be reviewed last year over 150,000 homes were bought using the help to buy equity loan scheme and it was used in half of the purchases of persons homes last year Clive Betts is chair of the Housing, Communities and Local Government Committee and I asked him whether he shared the Secretary of State's concerns about the company. Yes, I do. I mean, we've had the well-publicised uh, story of the previous chief exec, uh, uh, Jeff Furban, getting uh, initially £100 million in bonus, mainly from the proceeds of the Help to Buy scheme. It you know, eventually was uh, uh, reduced to £75 million. But then uh, we're taking evidence as a, a select committee about uh, uh, leasehold issues at present. And we've had a lot of people, including people who bought houses from Persimmon, coming and complaining, uh, first of all, that they were sold leasehold rather than freehold, and there doesn't really seem to be any... Uh, uh, good justification for that but secondly when they were sold uh, uh, at least sold they were told well that's all right you can buy the freehold uh, for basically the same price in a couple of years time uh, when they tried to buy it they found that persimmon had sold the properties uh, the, the freeholds on to uh, another company and they were then asking many times the original price uh, for the purchase uh, of the freehold uh, that that really isn't on that that's bat practice uh, that we heard about let's elaborate just a little bit on what the difference mm -hmm. it makes easy if you do buy fully sold so I mean, in particular, what were the problems with buying a property leasehold? Well, the, the problems are that you have to pay ground rent, uh, and some of the ground rents we heard about were uh, going up at a, uh, a considerable rate in the future. Uh, that meant people were often facing bills of uh, thousands of pounds at some future date just to um, effectively rent the land on which their property, which they thought they fully owned, uh, was standing. I mean, leasehold is that. You, you buy, buy the bricks and mortar, but the land that you're standing on uh, is still there in the ownership of another company. Now, perhaps people should have read their contracts a bit more carefully, but we also heard uh, that Persimmon and the other companies were often recommending a purchaser uh, to a solicitor uh, who they said, oh, go and talk to them. They know all about the, uh, uh, the help to buy scheme on our sites. They'll, they'll do it for you. Um, and then, of course, the solicitor didn't advise them of all, all these problems down the line. Persimmon themselves would argue they're meeting a housing need. Since 2012, they've increased their output by 75%. So actually, they mm. are trying at least to do the right thing. Well, they're doing it with a lot of help through the Help to Buy scheme, which, uh, uh, you know, initially uh, a good idea when we had a real problem after the banking crash uh, and house building, you know, fell alarmingly. So, yes, to try and get it back. Uh, but then, you know, when there's public money involved, uh, I would expect the government to monitor how that money is used, whether the companies are using it, uh, are using it in a proper way. So, in your view, should Persimmon be dropped as one of the house builders on the scheme? Well, in the end, it's a government decision, but it seems to me there's a lot of evidence that might lead to the Secretary of State reaching that conclusion. Uh, he's clearly concerned about it. He's right to be concerned. Um, I'll be looking very closely now, as will the committee, at what action the government takes further. And is, in your view, a help to buy the problem here? Is it, for example, inflating house prices artificially? 
Well, that's a big question at present. Uh, the government's just had a, an analysis done which says uh, help to buy properties aren't uh, any different to the uh, average price uh, of properties in an area. I think there is some evidence uh, that perhaps in, on particular schemes, if you are a help to buy customer, the, the builder sees you coming and says, well, they're all right, they've got a bit extra money, um, they can afford a bit more and puts the price up. That, that's a concern. And I think I would want to see a further detailed impact assessment about whether there is any evidence uh, that houses sh uh, sold under help to buy have been sold for higher prices uh, when other properties on the same site have been sold uh, for lower prices. MP Clive Betts. Persimmon was unavailable for interview but sent us this statement and it says its performance over recent years reflects the group's success in growing its construction volumes to meet UK housing need and that since 2012 it's increased its output by 75% and invested £3.8 billion in new land and it adds that last year it announced a range of new customer service initiatives that it's confident will improve its, com its performance once they've had time to take effect. Well, I asked Steve Turner of the House Builders Federation whether he thought that the help to buy scheme was failing to deliver on its promises. No, I think the scheme was introduced uh, with three objectives. One was to help first time buyers get over the uh, deposit gap. Um, at the time, lenders were requiring 20% deposits, which people just couldn't afford. Help to buy enables people to buy with 5%. It was also introduced to boost uh, supply. And over the past five years, we've seen an unprecedented 78% increase in house building activity. Um, the third major objective was to generate economic activity. Now, last year, the house building industry was responsible for £38 billion pounds worth of um, economic activity. So clearly it is delivering against the three objectives it was, it was set out to. Are these all good solid homes though? Because what about building standards for companies such as Persimmon? Are they good enough? A lot of buyers we've read about and spoken to have felt very bruised after buying a new build home and then discovering multiple problems that haven't been resolved for months and sometimes years on end. The overwhelming majority of people who buy a new build home are happy with their home. We carry out a comprehensive survey every year of over 100,000 uh, new build buyers uh, and over 90% of those say they would buy again. There is no question that as volumes increased post-2012, um, there was a, a drop in quality that was unacceptable. The industry has worked very hard to address that. And the surveys are now showing that um, build quality is improving again. New builds are built to ever more exact, exacting standards, but we realise we've got to go further and we're working with people to, to try and do that. And what about new houses, new homes being sold as leasehold? Can house buyers, any of them, still justify doing that? Shouldn't they all be sold automatically with a freehold? Well, what we're seeing now is house builders and the government is, is looking to regulate on this, is um, new, these houses are not sold leasehold. And, and we've seen a, a fall in the number of uh, houses that are being sold through leasehold. That will continue to fall. Uh, flats is a different matter in the leaseholders being a tenure that has worked for centuries. Uh, it's, it, there's no viable alternative as yet. But again, it's, it's an issue we are tackling uh, and it's being dealt with. Is there an issue here at all of developers trying to do too much with that pressure on to build a lot of homes as fast as possible? No, I think what we've seen is the industry has been on a huge recruitment drive uh, to increase its capacity. It's been working with uh, its supply chain to ensure the materials uh, are available to enable it to build more. So the industry is now in a much better place. And I think the, the, the customer satisfaction surveys we show, uh, we, we, we do show that now we're getting the volume and we're getting the build quality. Steve Turner of the House Builders Federation.